Lot, alayhi salatu was salam, he is the son of Haran, the son of Taurah. Taurah is also called Azar, who is the father of Abraham. So Azar, who is Taurah, he is the father of Abraham. So this man, Taurah, he has a son named Haran. So that means that's Abraham's brother, Prophet Abraham's brother. And Haran had a son named Lut, Lot. So that makes him Abraham's nephew. Lot, the son of Haran. And this name, Lut, it is not originally from the language of the Arabs. So it is what they call Ajami. Ajami means not Arabic. Therefore, this name is not derived from the Arabic word liwat, which means sodomy. So it's not valid and it's not appropriate that the name of a noble prophet would be derived from a word with such a wretched meaning. And it is not valid, it is not permissible to call a sodomite a lutli. Rather, he should be called liwatli. That means a sodomite, someone who practices liwat. Lot, he believed in his uncle, Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he followed the sunnah of Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah verifies his belief in his uncle. In Surah Al-Ankabut, Ayah 26, Allah says, فَآمَنَ لَهُ لُوطُ Which means Lot believed in him. Lot believed in Abraham. He migrated with his uncle, Abraham, alayhi salatu wasalam, from Iraq. They were in Babylon. And he was with him in all of his travels. And then Allah made him a prophet and sent him to the people of a town called Sadum, which they call in English Sodom. Sadum with a scene. Sadum, which is or was in what is now. Jordan, close to the Dead Sea. So Allah Ta'ala sent this prophet at the time of Prophet Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. So there were two prophets at the same time. He took Prophet Ibrahim's permission and he left him. And he went to the city of Sadum. In this city, was the major city but it had a it had suburbs or if you want a metropolitan area surrounding towns that follow that main town they were called Sab'ah and Umrah or Umrah that's probably Gomorrah and Duma and Sa'wa and the people of Sadum were among the most blasphemous of people, the most sinful of people. That is, that they used to commit sins, atrocious sins besides blasphemy, and the most wretched of people inwardly, having very wicked hearts and having ugly lifestyles. They had bad manners and low selves. And they were not shy to do anything objectionable. They had no shame in doing anything objectionable. And they didn't have any chastity that prevents them from sin. They even used to ambush the people on the road and rob them. And they would commit bad deeds in their sessions, in their gatherings, and they didn't use to stop each other or forbid each other. 
And these people, they innovated a sin, an ugly sin that they were famous for, sodomy, committing sodomy. Allah told us what Prophet Lut said to them in Surah to Shu'ara verses 165 and 166. وَتَذَرُونَ مَا خَلَقَ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ عَادُونَ It means, do you approach the men and abandon what your Lord has created for you of mates, counterparts, meaning the female? In fact, you are transgressing people. And he said to them, وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِنْ دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ As Surah Al-A'raf, Ayahs 80 and 81. They mean that Allah sent Lut to his people. And he said to them, Do you commit atrocities that no one before you in the world has ever done? Surely you certainly approach the men with desire instead of the women. In fact, you are people who have gone beyond the boundaries. That means that that's haram, that's a sin, mashallah. Uh, let's be clear about something. If a person believed in Allah and his messenger, and he said the shahada, he's a Muslim, even if he committed this sin, that won't take him out of Islam. He will be a sinful Muslim. He believes in Allah and his messenger. He has no doubt that this is the right religion. But he has a desire in his heart that he's obligated to resist. It's not permissible for him to do that. So if he did that without deeming it lawful, he's a sinful Muslim. Now let's go even a step further. What if a person found in himself a desire for the same gender? Did he commit a sin? If that desire was something that was not by his will, it means he found that in himself, he found this inclination in himself, his obligation is not to act according to that feeling. So if he fights that feeling and he resists it and he doesn't, act according to it, then he's not committing a sin. He's doing what he's supposed to do, which is to fight the bad inclination in himself, just like any other bad inclination one might have. Some people might have the inclination to steal. Some people might have the inclination to lie. Some people might have the inclination to murder. So when one has just the inclination only, that means he finds it in his heart. He might even consider doing it without being determined to do it as long as the person is not determined to sin he won't be sinful he will become sinful when he determines that in his heart if he's determined to do it he becomes sinful even if he doesn't do it but if he's not determined to do it and he's tempted to do it whatever it might be and he hasn't settled on it and decided then he's not sinful yet but this is definitely a sin so there are some um Muslim politicians, or at least they claim to be Muslims, but you know, I can't say they're not Muslims. I haven't heard that they said that sodomy is lawful. If they said sodomy is lawful, that's blasphemy. But they do support people who do this forbidden practice. So those people are compromising themselves as Muslims. So the people of Prophet Lut, alayhi salatu wasalam, from the hardness of their hearts, and the corruption of their manners, they used to outwardly, publicly commit sodomy. They wouldn't hide 
and they would not be ashamed. Then Allah sent his prophet Lut alayhi salatu wasalam and called them to the religion of Islam and to the worship of Allah alone, the one who has no partners, and he forbade them from committing sins and objectionable matters and from those ugly deeds. However, they insisted on blasphemy. They didn't accept to believe in Allah. And they insisted on committing shirk. And they insisted on doing the bad deeds that they were doing, especially the sodomy. And it was said that the matter that pushed them to approach men instead of women was that they were people who had gardens or fields and fruits in their area, in their houses, for example, and around their area, in the town, that is. And they also had fruits and gardens on the outskirts of the town. And they were inflicted with severe drought, and they were going hungry. So they had a problem with people coming to their land and taking their food. Some of them said to the others, if you stop the people from taking your fruits, the travelers and the, the, the wanderers, if you stop them from taking your fruits, then you can live off of them yourselves. So they said, well, how can we stop the people from taking our fruits? So some of them said, this is what you do. You want to stop the people from coming around here? Let it be known about you that if you catch anyone around here, you will snatch them and sodomize them. And the devil made this idea appealing to them. And he made the action itself appealing to them. So that's what they started doing. And that was their practice and that's, that's what they were known for until Allah Ta'ala sent to them a prophet. Allah says in the Quran, وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ وَأَنْتُمْ تُبْصِرُونَ أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِّن دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجْهَلُونَ It means, and Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala sent Prophet Lut to his people. His people means the people in the city in which he resided. That city and its surrounding suburbs. He said to his people, do you commit the atrocities while you are sane? Do you approach men with desire instead of women? In fact, you are ignorant people. And he called them to the worship of Allah and to abandoning these bad deeds. And Allah says in Surah Al-Shu'ara, Ayahs 161-164, through 164, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ لُوطٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ And when their brother Lot said to them, Won't you have piety? Their brother means the man who lived in their town. He was not their brother in religion and he was not their brother in practice. إِنِّي لَكُمْ رَسُولٌ أَمِينٌ I am surely... A trustworthy messenger to you. Fear Allah and obey me. I'm not asking you to give me any fee, any payment or prize. In ajriya illa ala rabbil alameen. My reward is from the Lord of the Worlds. But they stayed on what they were doing. And his preaching and his reminding didn't benefit them. And his commanding them 
with the good and forbidding them from the evil didn't increase them in anything but arrogance and transgression and even hastening the torture of Allah out of objecting to the threat and belying their prophet that was sent to them. That means that they used to say to Prophet Lut, alayhi salatu wasalam, bring the torture of Allah if you are truthful. And they didn't just settle with that. They didn't just settle with belying Prophet Lut, alayhi salatu wasalam, and being stubborn and arrogant. But, in fact, they even threatened him. They threatened to kick him out of the town. And they wanted to do that. They wanted to expel him from their presence. They grew weary of his preaching to them and talking to them and, and, and advising them to stop doing that. Allah told us in Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 82, وَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَن قَالُوا أَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ it means his people had no answer except that they said, O oh, townsmen, citizens, kick him out of your town. He and his people, they're clean ones. They want to clean up. Let's get rid of them. And Allah told us in Surah Al Shu'ara, Ayah 167. قَالُوا لَإِن لَمْ تَنْتَهِيَا لُوتُ لَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُخْرَجِينَ They said, Lut, if you don't cease, if you don't quit, you're going to be kicked out of here. So his people insisted on their blasphemy and their transgression and their being immersed in bad deeds. So Prophet Lut, he made dua, he made supplication and he asked his Lord to support him. Allah told us in Surah Al Shu'ara, Ayah 169, that Prophet Luke said, Rabbi wa ahli mimma ya'maloon. Oh, my Lord, spare me and my family from what these people do. And he said, as we're told in Surah Al-Ankabut, Ayah 30, قَالَ رَبِّنْ صُرْنِي عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْمُفْسِدِينَ It means that he said, Oh my Lord, support me over the people who cause corruption. And so Allah sent angels, Jibreel, Gabriel, and Mikael, Michael, and Israfil, I don't know what Israfil might be in English. The angel who blows the horn. Those angels, on their way to the cities of the people of Lut, they pass by Ibrahim, by the command of Allah. And they gave him the good news of having a son, Ishaq, Isaac. And that after Isaac would come Ya'qub, Jacob, they told him about that, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he was an old man at that time. He asked them, Qala fama khatubukum ayyuhal mursaloon. He said, what's up with you, O messengers? What's your story, O messengers? Qalu inna urusilna ila qawmin mujirimeen. They said, we have been dispatched to a criminal people. لِنُرْسِلَ عَلَيْهِمْ حِجَارَةً مِّن طِينَ So that we could send upon them stones from clay. Allah told us in the Qur'an, وَلَمَّا جَاءَتْ رُسُولُنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَى قَالُوا إِنَّا مُهْلِكُوا أَهْلِ هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةِ إِنَّ أَهْلَهَا كَانُوا ظَالِمِينَ 
And when our messengers, the messengers of Allah, who are the angels, came to Abraham with the good news, the good news of his son and his grandson, they told him, surely we are the destroyers of the people of this town, meaning the people of Lut. Certainly, its people have been among the wrongdoers. Abraham said, in worry, Lut is there. They said, we know better about who is there. We will save him and his family, except for his wife. She will be among those who shall be tortured. That's in Surah Al Ankabut, Ayahs 31 and 32. His wife was a disbelieving woman. He was a Muslim. His, his daughters were Muslims, but his wife had not embraced Islam. And in fact, she used to encourage the people of the town to do what they used to do. And it's not true what the Jews and the Christians said, and it was the Jews who said it originally, and the Christians followed them, that Prophet Lut, alayhi salatu was salam, he drank alcohol and he committed incest with one of his daughters, and then the next day he did it again and he did that again with his other daughter. That's blasphemy to believe that a prophet would do something like that. So um, that's from the fabrications of the Yahud. Those angels, they went out leaving Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and went towards the town of Sadum, Sodom. Those angels came in the shapes of beautiful young men, as a test from Allah, Allah tests his slaves with whatever he will. He does with his creations whatever he will. Isn't Allah the one who put in his own book verses that if they are taken by their literal meanings, someone would believe that he is someone living in the sky having organs and moving around? Yes. He did that out of his wisdom and justice as a test and a tribulation for his slaves. Isn't he the one who will send the Dajjal, the one-eyed imposter who will claim to be God and who will do supernatural things to make people think he's God before Jesus comes down and then people will worship him? Allah is the one who created that man and what that man can do. Insha'Allah, we'll have a lesson about the signs of Judgment Day. Insha'Allah, you'll get it soon. And like that, Allah Ta'ala sent those angels to the town of the Sodomites, and those angels came in the forms of extremely beautiful men, extremely beautiful young men. They arrived at noon, and they came to Prophet Lut, alayhi salatu was salam, and they entered in on him, and he found that he has visitors who, as far as he can tell, he has visitors who are beautiful young men without facial hair. Mentioning that they don't have facial hair is a reference to their being a tribulation for those sodomites, for those sodomites, because those sodomites would see young men without facial hair. Without facial hair doesn't mean they don't have eyebrows or eyelashes, so it means that they don't have mustache and beard and things like that. And their faces were shining and beautiful. And they did not tell Prophet Lut at the first, when he first got there, they didn't tell him who they were. And so he thought that they were humans and that they were guests and that they were seeking lodging. And so he welcomed them and he was afraid for them that if he doesn't take them in, that someone else will take them in. He was afraid that whoever saw them would go and tell everyone else. So he took pity on them and feared for them from his people 
that his people would transgress against them. Allah told us in Surah Hud, Ayah 77, وَلَمَّا جَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا لُوطًا سِيءَ بِهِمْ وَضَاقَ بِهِمْ ذَرْعًا وَقَالَ هَذَا يَوْمٌ عَصِيبٌ It means when the messengers of Allah came to Lot, he took their presence as something bad, as a problem. He took their presence as problematic. See abihim wa daqa bihim dar'a when he saw them how they were the time of day the town they were in he was very upset wa qala hadha yawmun asib he said this is a hard day add to that that his people had forbidden him alayhi salatu wassalam unrightfully forbidden him from taking in guests However, he saw that this was something unavoidable. And as soon as they came, as soon as those angels came to Lut, alayhi salatu wassalam, his wife came and she saw his guests and how beautiful they were. So she went out to her people and she said, Oh, Lut, he has in his house men that I have never seen men who look so fine. And as soon as the people of Lut heard that, they went rushing and hurrying. Come on, let's go. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. So they came to his door. Lut, we want to see your guests. So he started, he started talking to them, trying to talk sense into them through the door while they were trying to open it. And he argued with them through the door in a good way. And he even offered them his own daughters in marriage because it is not lawful for men to be with men. So he was saying to them, you are men. If you want to do something, you can marry my daughters. That's how much he wanted to avoid this horrible action. However, those people refused that and they were very blunt about what they wanted. They said to him, we don't have anything to do with your daughters. We don't want your daughters and we don't want the women in the town either. All we want are those men in your house. So he got even more upset. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And he wished that he just had the might to fight them all. Allah Ta'ala says, وَجَاءَهُ قَوْمُهُ يُهْرَعُونَ إِلَيْهِ وَمِنْ قَبْلُ كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ And his people came to him hurrying. And previously they had been doing bad things. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ هَأُولَاءِ بَنَاتِي هُنَّ أَطْهَرُ لَكُمْ He said, Oh my people, these are my daughters. They are cleaner for you, purer for you. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُخْزُونِ فِي ضَيْفِي أَلَيْسَ مِنْكُمْ رَجُلٌ رَشِيدٌ He said to them, Fear Allah and do not shame me by assaulting my guests. Is there not a guided man among you? قَالُوا لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ مَا لَنَا فِي بَنَاتِكَ مِنْ حَقٍّ وَإِنَّكَ لَتَعْلَمُ مَا نُرِيدٍ They said, By God, you know that we don't have anything to do with your daughters. You know what we want. قَالَ لَوْ أَنَّ لِي بِكُمْ قُوَّةً أَوْ آوِي إِلَى رُكْنٍ شَدِيدٍ He said, if I but had the strength to fight you or I had strong reinforcements, meaning then I would fight you. So when the angels saw the difficulty and the calamity that Prophet Lut was facing, alayhi salatu wasalam, they then told him who they really were. And it was narrated that 
Prophet Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, when he went to try to stop his people from breaking into his house and they were trying to get in, Angel Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, Gabriel, he sought the permission of his Lord to punish those people. And he was granted that. And so he stepped out to them. He went out to them. And he smacked them across their faces with the edge of one of his wings. And their eyes were wiped away. It was said that their eyes sunk into their faces. And there was not left on their faces any trace of eyes. And so they ran away, feeling around the walls and stumbling and threatening Prophet Lut alayhi salatu wasalam and saying to him, now you've done it, we're going to come back with everyone and you're going to see what's going to happen. So the angels, they commanded Prophet Lut alayhi salatu wasalam to leave the land of those people with his family at night before the break of dawn because the appointment of their destruction would be at dawn. Allah told us in Surah Hud, Ayah 81, قَالُوا يَا لُوتُ إِنَّا رُسُلُ رَبِّكَ لَنْ يَصِلُوا إِلَيْكَ They said, Oh, Lot! Certainly, we are messengers of your Lord. Those people shall not lay a hand on you. So, at night, flee, run, leave with your family. When you hear the destruction happening, don't turn and look. Because to see what will happen, what we didn't mention yet, is something that a person can't bear to see. وَلَا يَلْتَفِتْ مِنْكُمْ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا مْرَأَتَكْ And let not one of you turn to look. Except for your wife. She will look. إِنَّهُ مُصِيبُهَا مَا أَصَابَهُمْ And what will inflict them shall inflict her. إِنَّ مَوْعِدَهُمُ الصُّبِحْ Surely their appointment is dawn. Then it was reported that when Prophet Lut heard that they would be destroyed at dawn, he said to them, can you destroy them sooner than that? Like now? So they said, Isn't dawn soon? And so there came to the people of Lut from Allah Ta'ala that which could never be repelled. A very severe torture. Allah says in the Quran, فَلَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا جَعَلْنَا عَالِيَهَا سَافِلَهَا وَأَمْطَرْنَا عَلَيْهَا حِجَارَةً مِّن سِجِّيلٍ مَنْضُودٍ It means, when the command of Allah came, he made the upper part of the town become the lower part. And he made stones of clay rain upon them. How is that? Angel Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, the one whom Allah described in the Quran as being extremely powerful. In Surah Al-Takweer, Allah says about Jibreel, the He is the very powerful one and noble to Allah, the Lord of the Arsh. And in another ayah in Surah Al-Najm, Allah says about Jibreel, Allamahu Shadidul Kuwa. It means Muhammad was taught by the extremely powerful one. What did he do, this very powerful angel? He inserted one feather of his wings. And he has 600 wings. He's very large. Angel Jibreel in his true form is very large. He inserted one feather of his wings into the ground and uprooted 
all of those towns, the main town and the suburbs, and even the animals that were there, they were still there. He raised them all the way up to the clouds. He raised them so high that the angels in the sky could hear the sounds of their roosters and the barking of their dogs. And then he flipped them upside down and he made the upper part become the lower part without any exhaustion, without any difficulty. And a scream came to them from the sky and stones rained upon them successively, nonstop. And it was said that each stone had the name of its target written on it. And it was mentioned that his wife, when she went out with her husband, Lut alayhi salatu was salam, and she heard the sounds of the torture, she turned and she said, my people! And then a stone hit her, and she died. I heard the kuffar saying that the wife of Luke turned into a pillar of salt. I don't know where they got that from. I've never personally encountered that in uh, in anything that I've studied. I don't know if there's in any of the books of Tafsir, or if any of the scholars have mentioned that. But what we've learned is that one of those stones hit her and she died like that. Not that she turned into a pillar of salt. And so those people are the people that Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Najm. Al-Mu'tafiqah, it means the people who are flipped. By that, Allah destroyed those people. Allah says in Ayah 102 of Surah Al-Hud, وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخَذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةً إِنَّ أَخْذَهُ أَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ It means like that is the torture of your Lord when he tortures a town. For being unjust. Certainly the torture of your Lord is severe and painful.